Beep, 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 beep. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. I hope you are all well. It's lovely to see you once again. It's cold, miserable, and dark here in the UK, but there you go, it's the UK. <laughs> and quite frankly, I'm a bit of a hobbit. I'm probably happier in the cold and the dark, with lots of food and a roaring fire. <laughs> it's just me. Right, become a warrior teacher, please. Look at my pinned tweet. Good stuff going down on that front. Um, and... Buy me a coffee, you know the usual stuff. Do the usual. Give us a hand if you can. It would be really helpful. Um, I've got some really, I got a really interesting one today. I was quite taken by this, so I've read it a couple of times. I thought, hmm. I thought one's viewers, one's denizens of the Twitteroids and the YouTubes will be interested in this. And it's about people who, um, they're speech language therapists. Hmm. They're about helping people who lose the power of speech or, or, or struggle with the power of speech and understanding language. And they, you know, are doing something that most people, that some many people, and other, most, some of many, <laughs> that's not really, right? <laughs> that people have done in previous professions to highlight the problems with capture by, you know, CSG, gender identity, like ideology, all the usual, all the, all the guff, right? So it says here, we are a speech language pathologist from the US and a speech and language therapist from the UK, and they've written a paper. And I think it's quite an important paper, not least of all because it approaches, it approaches a problem within their particular discipline, but also because it provides us, as usual, with a template of what to do if you wish to do something similar. Um, we wrote this paper, and here's the explain why. It's the links in the Dubris, as usual. We wrote this paper to request that colleagues always consider the rights, abilities, and disabilities of our clients when there is an expectation for preferred pronouns to be used in any context, which I don't think there is a context where they can be used, but that's just me. And that, number two, the second reason they wrote the paper, provide evidence-based information for why this matters and so that others may use it when writing policies, making complaints, providing advice, developing... Now, here's, here comes the language of speech therapists. Here's an Argo for you. Developing EHCPs, no, no idea, and PLPs, brackets, old IEPs, close brackets. As if that helps! <laughs> I don't understand it. I'm not a speech and language therapist. And then it says, if you do that, it ensures MCAs are correctly carried out and so on. Right, OK. That last paragraph there I don't understand, good folks, because I'm not a speech and language therapist, and I don't expect many of you are. Be nice to have the explanation, though, you know. We remain anonymous here. So they've stayed anonymous on this one, which is absolutely fine. You've got to be anonymous, be anonymous. Hmm. We are registered and are respect with our respective regulatory bodies. So they're two registered specialists in speech and language therapy. Uh, use of preferred pronouns and ableist are ableist against the rights and interests of children and adults with communication, cognitive, sensory or mental health disabilities and challenges. I absolutely agree. I mean, I think that's something that people have been ignoring. But I think use of preferred pronouns is a problem for any adult or any child. I mean, just don't use them. That's the simple thing. You can't put a pronoun. Famous article there from years ago, which was used as used and is still used by many. Pronouns are rohypnol. You know, it's the pronouns are the beginning of the slippery slope. You simply don't do it, OK? My pronouns are, and I always say, His Majesty. <laughs> Oi, fatty. <laughs> Be serious, Barry, this is a serious thing. They've then got an email, which you can contact them on if you needed to for some reason, and information about how to cite the paper, usual for an academic journal. This position paper provides the evidence base for speech and language therapists, speech language pathologists and wider society that the use of preferred pronouns is ableist. <clears throat> it refers to UK and US practice, regulation and law, but the clinical evidence base can be generalised globally. The promotion and use of preferred pronouns in the clinical environment is counter to establishing an effective and safe therapeutic relationship and is not a functional approach to communication therapy. The uncritical use of preferred pronouns, directly and indirectly, discriminates against people with communication, cognitive, sensory, or mental health disabilities, bracket CCSM, mental disabilities, whose disability involves the processing of regular pronouns. I know people that can't do it. I know, you know, I've, I've watched gay people and uh, sat with, you know, one of these wibbling lunatics, and watch them go, uh, 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 she, uh, she, it, ze, zer, oh, uh, I've watched them do it. 
right? <clears throat> this is intelligent people. This is people who are, you know, who don't struggle with their speech, who have no need to struggle with their speech. And yet I've seen them go, uh, uh, it, er, it, she, and then look shocked and horrified while the, you know, the grumpy little gender identity pixie loses her, loses the plot. You don't respect me. No, I don't, because you're lying about who you are. I tolerate you. That's about as good as it gets. Now finish your glass of wine. Here, have a baby shower. That's how you deal with them. Stop crying. Nobody cares. But I'm a boy. You're not a boy. You're, you know, you're a twenty-year-old woman larping as a gay man, and you're offensive to me and to reality. Goodbye. You are the weakest link. <laughs> you are the weakest kink. You can do it with the men as well. You are the weakest kink. Goodbye. <laughs> now, they continue in this article, it also affects people who speak another language, who may, who may additionally experience a specific communication impairment or are limited in their activity and participation in life as a result of confusing language, reducing access to healthcare, education, and so on. Good, isn't it? By extension, people with CCSM disabilities and those who speak another language are also at a disadvantage understanding gender-neutral language and ideological terminology. Organisations who promote and use preferred pronouns and gender-neutral language may be open to litigation <laughs> for discriminatory practice against children and adults with communication disabilities. Any attempts to remediate this, other than to cease the practice as the default, is likely to require multiple staff members, resources, time and money. We recommend that speech and language therapists, speech language pathologists, consider the evidence presented so that they are better informed about the impact of preferred pronouns and can thereby come to a more informed decision on their use. We also recommend this on a society-wide level. Key words for the article are ableism, disability, discrimination, communication, speech and language therapy, speech, language, pathology, sex and gender. Well done. They're both anonymous and I understand why. The conversations have been rattling on about anonymity, haven't they, for a little while now. You know, we need people need to stay anonymous. Should you say who you are? As one of our, my warrior teachers sort of comes screaming out of the woodwork, I'm here. This is what I'm fed up now. I'm done with them. You know, people do that. But other people have to be very careful because of your job or other things that may be affected, so don't do anything silly. Um, but that's a really interesting one, isn't it? That's come from speech and language therapists, and I think it provides a template for thinking about exactly how does this bullshit affect people with disabilities. I was looking at some of the figures for the university um, uh, on just exactly what a university is up to, right? Okay, for part of the Warrior Teacher Programme. And I, did you know nearly 50% of students in some intakes are, are, have, have a disability? or identify as disabled. You know, if somebody's identifying disabled, there's a specific, I believe, I mean, Sarah Fillimore may be able to help with this. There is a specific um, definition of disability. There is a specific legal definition of disability. So you can't identify into it. It's just nonsense, you know, and bad news for people who are disabled. I thought this was interesting. It's like a kind of template. Go and have a look at the rest of it because there's obviously a there's a full article, a full a full article, well worth reading that goes with that, with the links in the Dubris. Um And I think it's a um, a very interesting take from a particular and very uh, very specific area, that of speech and language. And I think it's important we recognise that this is an assault upon speech and language. So speak, go and have a read and let me know what you think in the comments. All right. I think it was worth taking on board. I'll see you later.